Hey, how's it going? And today we are taking a look at manually styling the combo box in the widget blueprint in Unreal Engine. And this is kind of a esoteric topic. I mean, not everybody is that interested in this, but this comes up if you're building a menu system and you want to have drop down buttons that people can choose from with the options on them. So you end up with something that looks like this. So here is, you click there, and then we have a choice of drop-down buttons that we can select. This is one that's been manually styled, and I think it looks a lot better than the way it does by default, and that's why I'm doing this tutorial. The issue is, is that there's literally hundreds of settings in the combo box, and it's not clear from what they're called, what's what exactly, so it takes some stumbling around to get it all figured out but I hope to make the process as smooth as possible for you. I'm not going to build this from scratch. Essentially, all you need to do is create a widget blueprint like here, and then just create a canvas panel. Let me go ahead and stop that from running. Bring in a canvas panel, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this combo box because we'll start from scratch, and then we'll bring in a fresh one. And then as far as what's displaying this, we just come into the open level blueprint here, and I have my create widget here so we can see it. So we do have to jump back between the new widget blueprint and here to see the changes. And I'll do that quite a few times so you can see one at a time how things are being changed. I was gonna say without further ado, let's get started, but <laughs> I'm trying not to say that anymore. So let's get this party started and get going. Click on here and just go ahead and grab a combo box and then just drag it on top of the canvas panel and it comes in right there. Let me just grab it and pull it down here in the middle so we can just look at it. To get started, the most important settings are how many drop-down buttons do we want and what is our font size gonna be. As much as you can search for stuff, I think it's better that you actually see where things are located here. Here under content, default options, here we can decide how many drop-down buttons we want. So I'm just gonna say four. So I'll just go one, two, three, four. And then I'll just go none tab, low, medium, and high. And then this is important here, the selected option. This is what it'll be set on by default. And if you don't put something in here, you won't be able to see anything here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put medium in there. And then we'll go ahead and compile and save those changes. And you can see, we can see the text, it's not filling the space, so we need a bigger space. So what we're gonna do is just come up here, make sure this is selected, and go size to content. And now we can see our button. And you can see how bland and generic it is, so that's what we're trying to change. So the first thing you might wanna adjust is the font size. The font size might be okay by default, but you might wanna change it, and that's a separate main category here. So if we collapse these, you'll see there's font right there. And here, we can just change our font size. So let's say we'll just make it 25. And for every change, of course, we've got to compile and save. And there is our font. So that takes care of that. Now, there's two aspects to this. There are the settings here for this top portion. And then there's the drop down buttons. And those are two separate categories of settings, really. There's not that many that they share in common. I think hover is one setting that they share, but there are two separate sections that we have to go to. So we're gonna focus on just adjusting this first. And the first thing I'd like to do is just, I'd like to change the color of the font, and then I'd like to get rid of this button background here. So to do that, we're gonna go to what is called, the, it's under style here and it's a combo button here, and we open button style, and we gotta open normal, and we're gonna open hovered too. Those two kinda go together at the same time. What I can do here for this background is just on the alpha channel here, under normal button style here, we're just gonna put zero and get rid of it. And this will be a lot better. Now when we hover our mouse, it's gonna be the same thing all over again, so we don't want that either. So here on the tint, we're just gonna zero that out too. So when we hover over it, we don't have this distracting color. So I'm gonna compile and save those changes there. And then the last thing that we'll do before we see what this looks like is, 
we might want to change the font color. Actually, I would probably leave it black, but I'm going to just change the color just so you can see where we change the color. And what's kind of confusing about this is that's its own category too, and that's specifically called foreground color. So if we come down here, right here, it's its own category right under font. So you see there's font and foreground color. This is what will change the color here on this top button here. So all I want to do is you can pick any color you want. I'm just going to change it to this orange color and then we'll go OK. And so in just those few settings, we've gotten rid of the background and we changed our font color. We've changed our size. So let's compile and save that and go take a look at how it looks. So that looks good. If I hit the drop down button though, you see we've got the same problem. We want to clear out the background here. We want to change the font color. We want to move the padding over. And so those are all settings that we're going to change and adjust right now. So let me go ahead and stop the simulation. And for this, we're going to go into style. And here we are looking for our custom button style here. And this is the part that's not intuitive. So there is this one setting here called menu border brush. And this is what controls the background. So what we have to do here is on our tint, we're just going to drop the alpha down to zero. And that should clear out the background on our buttons. But let's just go and see if that's what does that. Just doing that will make the menu look better. So if we come back in here and I hit, see how we don't have the background anymore? And how much better that looks? Yeah, so just doing that. But that's called menu border brush. Now we want to scoot this over and the setting for that is called menu border padding. And so that's in the same general area where we were. It's right underneath this. And here we want to probably come in on the left side and maybe by 40 right there. And if we stop the simulation and compile and save and come in and hit play, look here, it's looking a lot better. Now the only thing that we might want to do is get rid of this blue highlight there and change the font color if we wanted to. But you might want to have two separate font colors here just to draw the distinction between what you're on and what the choices are. But I'm just going to change them just to show you how you can change those colors. So for that one, we're actually going to look for something called item style. And it's around here somewhere item style, it's right under style. And these are two settings that we're going to adjust to get rid of that blue highlight. But there's one down here called text color right here. And then we'll just change that to orange like that. And that'll change all the color on our fonts on the drop down buttons. And then here to get rid of the blue, what we can do here is honestly just turn it to black and then just drop the opacity down, you know, so we know that it's selected. And then we can do that also for, that's the active hovered brush and then the active brush as well. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just drop that down and bring the alpha channel way down and we'll go OK. And believe it or not, that's all the main settings. So let me stop the simulation. I'll hit compile, come over here hit play, medium, and isn't that a, a much nicer looking drop down? It's a lot more legible, I think. And of course you could change these colors if you want them to pop a little bit more. Like if you, that has to do really with the background you're against, so let me come out of the game here just to show you. If I go control L and just darken the scene and I hit play, See how well it pops from the screen? So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope you found it helpful. It's surprising how deep this particular widget is, just this one widget. But with a little knowledge of what the key settings are, you can really make it look professional. So anyway, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.